And without further ado, as we are six days away from a crucially important pair of Senate runoff elections in Georgia, we are very pleased to welcome back to the program U.S. Senator David Perdue, one of the Republicans running in that race. He's the incumbent seeking six more years. And Senator, it's good to have you back. I hope you had a nice Christmas. We did, uh, Guy. Thank you for having us. Uh, we're, we have the last uh, two months, we've been on this statewide 125-stop uh, uh, bus tour from Hayhara to Hiawassee, Georgia. We finished tonight in Hiawassee on this on today's uh, effort, and it'll be our 100th stop. We're uh, taking our message to the people, and that is if we get out and vote, we hold the line in Georgia against this onslaught of this socialist agenda the Democrats are, are dead set on uh, perpetrating on our country. So I want to ask you all about that race. First, a piece of business out of Washington, D.C., because there's a debate right now about COVID relief. One package has already passed, and some of that money is in the pipeline to get to the American people. The president has been asking for more money, 2,000 people for most Americans, or $2,000, rather, for most uh, Americans. You and Senator Leffler have been some of the Republicans to back that proposal. I know that your opponent, John Ossoff, has said he doesn't like to get bogged down in the details, except when it suits him for political reasons to do so. You don't have that luxury. You have to get bogged down in the details. It's your job as a U.S. senator. As you considered this proposal from the president and decided to come out in favor of extending these benefits further to most Americans, was there any part of you as a fiscal conservative uh, that was concerned about giving that large amount of money across the board to most people all over the country, even those who haven't lost their jobs or suffered any acute fiscal or financial hardship during this pandemic? Guy, uh, look, as one of the most uh, staunch uh, fiscal conservatives in Washington, it's one of the reasons I ran was our burgeoning debt six years ago, and it's gotten worse. But when you have a pandemic like we had uh, this year, what the president did in our first CARES Act, what we passed was absolutely necessary. 2.9 trillion, unprecedented. Uh, we brought uh, $660 billion to the smallest businesses in America and saved 50 million jobs. In Georgia alone, we saved a million and a half jobs. And then we knew around September we needed uh, some further help because of the extension of the, of the virus. But the Democrats played presidential politics, as you've called out on your various uh, exercises, that they wanted to play politics, presidential politics, and they blocked this all the way through November. Now they're blocking it again, or did, until uh, based on these Senate races. So I am delighted the president signed it in the law. Look, this is a balance. Of course we're concerned about the fiscal uh, implications of this. Half of the money that we're putting in this round, this trillion dollars, half of it is reprogram money that we already appropriated in the first round. That is not minimize the danger that we're in right now, but the president made a calculus. I made a decision uh, mathematically that says, look, we've got to help these people. Let's get through this virus, get this vaccine out there, and then we'll deal with getting serious about this debt. We've got to. Let me just remind your listeners, in the first three and a half years under President Trump's agenda, we did lower the debt curve, the increasing curve of debt by $2, billion, $2 trillion, according to CBO. And so we know growing the economy is part of it, but we've got to do so much more. But the first thing we have to do is get the vaccine out there and get past this virus. Senator, I want to play for you some audio. Earlier on Fox News Channel, our colleague here, Peter Ducey, caught up with your opponent down in Georgia on his bus tour and asked him a question. He had a, a pretty lengthy answer where he took lots of very hard shots at both you and Senator Leffler. I want to play part of it for you and get your reaction. Cut 24. We have two United States senators in Georgia who have blatantly used their offices to enrich themselves. This is beyond partisanship. And here's the bottom line. Kelly Leffler has been campaigning with a Klansman. Kelly Leffler has been campaigning with a Klansman. So, Senator, to me, I hear two lies there. Uh, one about alleged corruption that you have both been cleared of, uh, if investigations mean anything, right, if we care about uh, evidence. And then secondly, this Klansman line about Kelly Leffler taking a photo with someone who she doesn't didn't know who it was. Uh, but obviously the gloves are off. That's John Ossoff basically calling you a criminal and suggesting that she's a racist. Your response. You know, God, this is exactly uh, what the Democrats do. It's a James Carville theory from two decades ago. Just lie and keep lying, and pretty soon they expect it to become the truth. It doesn't. Look, this guy is, is the same guy, John Ossoff, that worked with the Chinese Communist Party directly for two years. 
after he ran for Congress and got beat. Um, the Chinese identified him just like they did Swalwell and Hunter Biden to try to influence, and he's had now two years of involvement with him. He tried to hide it. He did not disclose it like he was legally uh, uh, required to do. When he got found out, he then put, he then disclosed it. He lied about it again, and we still don't know how deep that runs. The influence of the Chinese Communist Party with his father and with him is very serious. So this is their desperation. They have not at all defended their platform. They have done nothing but attack Kelly and me, our business backgrounds, our outsider backgrounds, and that's all the Democrats have done. They've got nothing to defend the socialist agenda, which shows how desperate they are here in the 11th hour. Actually, now they're doing another one. They're calling out the voter suppression issue again, and that is just absolutely ridiculous. But it just shows that they're seeing numbers that tell them that this race is moving away from them. And that's what I feel out here as we're on the road, uh, Guy. So I want to mention a little bit longer and linger on Raphael Warnock because he's not your direct opponent but he and your opponent have declared themselves to be running mates and I find it fascinating Senator this video came out just before Christmas we've played it on this program of Warnock's ex-wife when the police were called to a domestic incident uh, she was tearful there's body cam footage from the police where she said she alleged by the way that he had uh, driven over her foot with his car. She said he cares about his reputation because he's running for the Senate, and I've tried to keep quiet about the way he behaves and what he does, but he crossed the line and she started to cry. She said he's a great actor. He puts on an amazing, phenomenal show, but I know how he really is. That's his own wife at the time. Just a few months ago, the footage is out from, the, from this police encounter, and Raphael Warnock has barely commented on it. He's barely been asked about it by the media. He put out some quick denial and said it's shameful for anyone to talk about it and, uh, and basically said, let's all move on. And for the most part, the press has said, yes, Sir, let, let's not really, let's not talk about this. It's rather inconvenient for you. My question for you, Senator, is if that footage from a police encounter had been, hypothetically, if it had been you, your family, your wife, is there any chance that you could have gone two weeks without a complete feeding frenzy from the press down there in Georgia in this race? Absolutely not. It just shows the hypocrisy of the Democratic Party and also the mainstream liberal media guy. You've called it out repeatedly. This is a perfect example, another one, where they're helping an actor. Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff are two actors. These, they are not trained. They're not, they have no background in anything that will add value to the United States, in my mind. We have one, Raphael Warnock, that uses his pulpit to spew poison to people about America. He, he depend, defends other people who say America is... A, a terrible place to be. He called it a land of genocide. He calls police thugs, uh, villains. This is a guy that uh, should not be in the United States Senate. John Ossoff, we know what he's done with China, or at least we begin, we're begin. we beginning to know, but these are two guys. One of them, John Ossoff, is a career politician wannabe. He's been, wanted to be in some, some kind of position in Washington since he was in high school, and he's desperate, and that's why they're both willing to say or do anything. The hypocrisy is this, is that nobody in the liberal media has called these two guys out and asked any tough questions about their agenda, about the socialist uh, bent that they really want to perpetrate on America, or about their backgrounds and what they would do if they got to the United States Senate. Yeah, Senator, last question. I know that you've got to run here. Joe Biden, the president-elect, is coming down there to campaign for your opponents. President Trump is coming down to campaign for you and Kelly Leffler on Monday, right before the election. How helpful do you think that final rally with the president is going to be for you guys in terms of rallying the troops to get out the vote on Tuesday? And do you agree with the president's call today that the governor, Governor Kemp, resign? Well, first of all, I am delighted the president's coming. Uh, we've talked about it. I, I was uh, with him on Christmas Day as we were working the final details of getting this uh, COVID bill done. I'm delighted he's coming. He is absolutely instrumental in helping us get the last few votes out on Tuesday. You know, the last time uh, Joe Biden came here, he had 75 people show up at his event. The last time the president was here, he's averaging over the last three events, something like 45,000 people. You'll see a big show on Monday night. He'll help us get this vote out, and we're going to hold the line right here against this leftist socialist agenda. It's pretty clear the eyes of America are on us, Guy. And, uh, you know, if we win Georgia, we save America, literally. And you're okay with Governor Kemp staying on as governor? Well, look, I, I know the president's very frustrated. I'm very frustrated, too, Guy. I mean, look at what's happened in the state. 
We called for the Secretary of State's resignation earlier in, in this process. What I'm doing right now is going to the courts. The president's gone to the courts. We had phone calls last night. We're trying to get to the bottom of what happened in uh, November. What I'm called to do right now is hold the line and make sure we don't lose my seat. Kelly Leffler is committed to do the same thing. So we're standing with the president uh, on all the issues out there that we see in front of us, the 2000 deal, the 230, I'm sorry, the uh, Section 230 issue, as well as the uh, election commission that the president has called for. Senator David Perdue of Georgia, the incumbent, one of the incumbents, the Republicans running down there, absolutely critical election next Tuesday the 5th. The final day for early voting is tomorrow in Georgia. Senator, we look forward to seeing what happens on Tuesday. Good luck and hopefully we'll be able to have you back after next week as a reelected senator. You got it, guy. Thank you. God bless you. Happy New Year.